Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Rosalie Kingwell, a research associate with the University of the Western Capes Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies, better known as PLAS, um, and also an independent research consultant. Hi there, I'm Tabo Fogani. I'm a researcher with the Alliance for Rural Democracy, sometimes known as the ARD. And I'm Dr. Simon Hull, a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town's Division of Geomatics. So welcome, everybody. Um, this is the second video in the series, An Introduction to Land Administration. You are probably watching this series of videos because you have some interest in land rights, land reform, land management, land tenure, land surveying, land use planning, land governance, and other land related issues. So let us begin with some definitions of these concepts to make sure that we are all on the same page. What you might not realize is that these defining terms, um, or defining these terms actually is easier said than done. We can't simply just go to the dictionary, look something up, and that's because essentially these definitions keep evolving over time in response to changes in society. That's right. Definitions develop when the awareness of the importance and scope of terms becomes more and more apparent to citizens and governments alike. Technological advancements change how things are done and broaden the possibilities of what can be done. Different concerns gain a prominence at different times according to the contemporary pressures in society. And so definitions of terms grow and develop in response to these changes. For example, a major concern in the former colonial regions is how to make land administration more inclusive. In the Western world, we, um, what we now call land administration systems actually started out as land information registers to identify owners in order to tax the land. These early land information systems changed and broadened into land administration systems as the land markets developed and populations expanded and cities and towns grew. In, in these colonial contexts, land administration was highly dualistic and differed along racial and ethnic lines. Different systems applied to indigenous populations and settlers. These legacies grew deep roots that continue today. Hence, definitions and understandings of terms change over time as national and global socioeconomic systems change. The meanings depend on the context in which the terms are used and by whom. So in the following videos, we will stick to quite broad and accommodating definitions that seem most logical and relevant to this course. At the most basic level, land administration can be conceived as the following. The operational component of land governance, in pursuance of national land policy goals, plans and strategies, and which involve processes of determining, recording and disseminating information about the relationship between people and land. National governments are usually responsible for most land administration functions, which are mostly undertaken by the executive branch of government and can be centralized or decentralized or even both. The executive is one of the three branches of government. The other two are the legislature and the judiciary. However, as we shall see, land administration is not only carried out by the government, though it is usually seen as the domain of government. Yes, land administration doesn't only happen when parcels are subdivided or plans are approved by the town council. It's actually going on all the time in many fundamental ways. Simply by occupying a piece of land, people stake their claim to it and hence are carrying out a function of land administration. Especially when, in the absence of title deeds or other proof of land rights, their absence from the plot may result in their loss of land rights. Exactly. Not only those who live in formal dwellings in urban areas or commercial farmland who need land administration. It's equally important for those living in off-register contexts such as informal settlements and on customary land. So no matter where you live, or under what conditions you need effective land administration 
for securing and protecting your land rights. Absolutely. And it's not only the government or the municipality that is responsible for land administration, it's everyone's responsibility. As I just said, even by occupying a plot of land, um, you're staking a claim to it, which is a function of land administration. By planting crops or erecting a fence or grazing your livestock there, you are actually signaling your rights to use and occupy the land. And those rights might be ratified by the local government authority, an informal settlement authority, even a slum lord, a community or tribal authority. Whatever the relevant authority is, they might engage in land administration functions such as allocating land, making plans for the development of land, attaching value to plots of land, and restricting certain land uses in certain areas. So land administration is concerned with the processes of finding out and sharing information about the relationship between people and land. It's happening all the time in multiple different ways, and it is everyone's responsibility. Well, that's all folks. Join us for the next video where we'll discuss why land administration is so important.